welcome to today's live, welcome to today's video. So today we're talking about the five things that you need to know to recover from chronic illness that doctors can't tell you. And let me just say, it's not that they don't want to tell you, they're not doing it out of malice, they just don't know, okay? So these are things that I never heard from any mainstream doctor at all. So I want to explain all of this to you in really simple terms so you can figure out how you can heal from your, your chronic illness. First of all, we've got this concept here called idiopathic. So this is a really funny word. So whenever you're given a diagnosis of an illness and they say that it's idiopathic, it makes you think, oh, well, it's idiopathic. I mean, that sounds quite bad. The root word of idiopathic is idiot, and it means they don't know. So when they give you a diagnosis and they say it's idiopathic arthritis, idiopathic psoriasis, idiopathic IBS fatigue or some kind of mental health problem. If they use the word idiopathic, they have no idea what's going on, okay? If you work with somebody, they give you a diagnosis of anything idiopathic, go and find somebody else because you're not gonna get the answers that you're looking for if someone can't figure out how to understand what the symptoms actually telling you. So if they give you an idiopathic diagnosis, so that includes any diagnosis that has idiopathic at the beginning of it, or something like IBS or like fatigue, like chronic fatigue syndrome or fibromyalgia, or some kind of mental health problem where they're not trying to like dig a little deeper and actually figure out what's going on underneath the surface and all they want to do is either provide some kind of medication to give you symptom relief or they just say like well it really sucks for you you know i feel really bad for you that this is just think something you're going to have to live with for the rest of your life don't accept that you don't have to accept that that these are what i was given i was given chronic fatigue syndrome i was given ibs they said we don't know what's going on, we don't know how to fix it, here's some medications, they might improve your life, but we don't have any solutions for you. Just run from those people. They're not gonna help you in the way that you wanna be helped. They're not gonna help you recover from a, a severe chronic illness. They're, they're just not, okay? So find somebody else. Don't accept idiopathic, don't accept any of these, like, these bullshit labels. They, they don't help you, they're not gonna get you anywhere find somebody that helps you figure out the root cause of the problem. So we're gonna talk about that a little bit down here. So don't, don't settle for less, you know? You can heal, I've done it, I've seen hundreds of other people do it, it's possible, you know? Don't accept an idiopathic diagnosis or a treatment plan that's just, you're on this medication for the rest of your life, you know? If, if someone pres prescribes you a medication, if a doctor gives you a medication, you should say, okay, cool, this is really good, this is gonna help me manage my symptoms now. But how are we gonna get me to a point where I don't need this medication anymore? How can we support the body so that it's functioning in a, in a healthy way and I don't have to lean on this medication anymore? That's, that's, a, that's an okay game plan, you know? I'm not anti-medication at all, but it's not a solution. And if you wanna really heal, you need to be solutions oriented and medication isn't, isn't actually the solution in most cases. Obviously talk with your doctor. Unless they're saying this is the solution for the rest of your life, then talk with another doctor because they're not gonna get you where you wanna go. The next we've got is pain, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna use this very broadly. So this is like joint pain, this is old injuries that you've had, this is chronic health problems, this is digestive discomfort, this is, you're not supposed to have pain in your body. It's very normalized nowadays, and there's a lot of like pain meds and all, the, all of this stuff. Pain is not normal. You should not be having pain. You should not have chronic pain. It's, it's, that's a, that's a big indicator. That's like, there's a flashing light on your dashboard saying something is wrong, something is wrong. Like, help me, fix it. Chronic pain is not normal. If you have chronic pain, chronic digestive discomfort, an old injury that hasn't healed properly, whatever it is, that's your body asking for help. Go and find the help that you need. If it's like a, an injury or something that's more like mechanical, trampoline accident in my shoulder, problem with my foot, go and find a physiotherapist, go and find an osteopath. Mainstream medicine, they're not really gonna refer you off for these things, they just say chronic pain is part of life, here's some medication, here's a pain suppressant, here's a muscle relaxant, that's the best we can do. Don't accept that, you know? The medications have side effects and they're not solving the problem. If there's a mechanical problem, if there's mechanical dysfunction, get your body adjusted. Go and see a chiropractor, go and see an osteopath, go and see a physiotherapist. You're not supposed to have pain. The same goes for chronic health problems, fibromyalgia, digestive discomfort. Do, like, I, I really dislike this normalization of pain. You know, It is not normal. You should not be living a life in pain. It is not normal. So don't accept that. If somebody's saying, okay, well, you just have this pain, you have to live with that. Just, just say, no, I don't agree with you. I'm gonna go and find somebody that's actually gonna help me not be in pain anymore. Because you living a life in pain 
It just, it's just, it sucks, you know, it's shit. I've been there, I've had debilitating pain to the point where I couldn't get out of bed, I couldn't do anything, you know? Digestive discomfort, physical pain, arthritis, muscle pains. You, you're useless when you feel like that because you don't feel productive. You're not contributing anything to anyone. You don't want to do anything. It sucks, you know, it's, a, it's an awful life. So just, just don't accept that. Say, okay, well, I have pain. I'm gonna do something about it. I'm gonna try and figure it out. So work, work with somebody that says, okay, I see this is a problem. I don't know if I'm gonna get you 100% pain free, but this is an indicator. We need to do something. We need to change something. We need to try something new. That's a really good mindset to have. So don't accept just, this is it for the rest of my life. I just have to live with this. Like, that's not okay. That, that's not okay. Next we've got root cause. So root cause is a concept where we're looking for the actual cause of the problems. And that ties really nicely into these two things. So in the situation of idio uh, an idiopathic diagnosis, they're saying, we don't know what the root cause is. And when you have chronic pain and they're saying, this is just it for the rest of your life, they also don't know the root cause of the pain. So we need to look at what is the root cause of the pain and figure out what is actually causing this pain. Like, say you have sciatica, for example, and you have a, a nerve compressed in your lower back. If you relieve that compression, the sciatica pain goes away, you know? You can take medication to reduce the, the pain or the discomfort or the symptoms. It's not solving the problem. If you, if you follow the problem to the source and fix it at the source, the, the, the symptoms go away. So it's about focusing on figuring out what the root cause actually is. And I found through, through my own experience and through that of many of my clients that one of the most common root causes is either a deficiency or a toxicity. For now, we'll keep it physical. We're gonna talk about the emotional stuff down here. But on a physical level, if you have a deficiency of anything that your body needs to function, you're gonna have a chronic health problem. This can be a deficient of, deficiency of vitamins and minerals. This can be a deficiency of adequate, appropriate protein. This can be a deficiency of movement, range of motion during exercise. This can be a deficiency of fresh, clean air, good quality water. This can be a deficiency of anything. A deficiency basically just means you don't have enough of something that is essential for you to be healthy. So you have to make sure that you're giving your body everything that it needs to be healthy. And on the, on the flip side of the same coin, you've got toxicity. So a deficiency is where you don't have enough of the things that you need. A toxicity is where you have too many of the things that you don't need that actually make you sick. So some of the really common forms of toxicity on a physical level are things like um, agricultural pesticides and chemicals, so like a glyphosate, stuff like that. Um, plastics, we're exposed to a lot of plastic now, nowadays, so that's like bottled water. That can even be wearing things like polyester clothes. You know, you don't really think about that, but they're made out of plastic, right? And you can absorb some of that through your skin. So plastics everywhere. If you cook with Teflon, you get, you get in plastics. So they're, they're all problems. Um, metal exposures. So food can be contaminated with, with, with metals. Um, amalgams in the mouth, they're a very, very common cause of, of uh, accumulated toxicity. There's, there's, there's loads of different ways that you can be exposed to these chemicals. So it's really like food additives, um, metals, plastics, and other types of carcinogenic compounds that you're exposed to. Fragrances, body care products, toothpaste, fluoride and chlorine in the tap water, like these are all toxins, right? And when your toxicity load increases past the point of what your body's able to cope with, you get chronic illness. So if we can reduce this toxic exposure, your body's gonna keep on top of it. And these two things usually go hand in hand. So if you have a toxic exposure, your body needs to detoxify it and it uses certain nutrients to do so. And in, when you're at that point, like you're okay, you're vital, you're healthy. But when you then run out of the nutrients that you need to do that detoxification process, toxicity begins to accumulate and you also have a deficiency. So these usually go hand in hand. These are really, really common root cause for lots of the more chronic, like digestive problems, hormone imbalances, those types of health problems. Point number four is that you have a, a fixed metabolism. This is so untrue. I have seen people eat 500 calories a day and gain weight, and I've watched people eat three to 5,000 calories a day and lose weight. Your metabolism is flexible. It changes every single day based on what you eat, what you think, what you do, who you're with. It's so flexible, okay? It's not set in stone. And this is why a calorie isn't the same 
for one person it is for another. The body, when it's really starved of nutrition, can get way more out of one calorie of, of food than in, in somebody else that is, that's got a, a more upregulated metabolism. So your, hormone, your hormones are really connected to this. Your weight, so your body weight, is really connected to this. And your energy levels are really connected to this. And this, is, this concept of having a fixed metabolism is so wrong. It's so flexible, you know? It will change if you do a fast for a day. It will change if you have a calorie surplus, then a deficit. It will, if, you, if you're unfortunate enough to have been told that the way to lose weight is to be in a chronic long-term calorie deficit, that absolutely destroys this metabolism. You lose a lot of that flexibility and it comes crashing down. And this is why you get stuck on weight loss plateaus. This is why your hormones get messed up. This is why your hair falls out. This is why you have no energy. This is why your period goes. This, this contributes to PCOS. This is, this is a, a horrible concept that we have in mainstream medicine, that you have a fixed metabolism. You don't, it fluctuates, it changes all the time based on stress, based on how much you sleep, based on what you eat, so many different variables. So this is super connected to your hormonal health, your weight and, and your energy. And finally, we've got the emotional root cause. So this is, I would say this is like a, a next level concept and it's somewhat acknowledged in mainstream medicine as you've got like therapists, psychotherapists, even like hypnosis is getting a bit more acknowledged as a, as a, as a modality to, to help with these kind of things. But what I find, and this is the case with people that have really chronic and debilitating problems, is you reach a level where the trauma is so deep, it's not in your head, you know? It was so frustrating to me when I was, when I was really ill and I'm just, I'm debilitated, I'm in bed, I'm disabled, I have a full-time carer, I can't function, okay? I'm, I am disabled. And they're, they're saying, maybe you're just depressed. It's like, how is that, how is that helpful? You know, that doesn't help me, that doesn't help anyone, that doesn't provide me solutions. Who wouldn't be depressed in a situation like that, you know? But that doesn't mean that's necessarily the root cause of the problems. And their, 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 their mindset is like, let's talk to a therapist, let's maybe put you on a medication. I'm not saying don't do these things, but I'm saying if you're in a place where it's really severe and you've tried some of these things, they haven't really helped, you probably need to go a layer deeper. And at this level, it's not, you, you can't experience these things, you can't experience emotions as emotions. So th this is probably you if you struggle with like depersonalization, derealization, you feel numb a lot of the time, you don't really feel anything, you have a history of like chronic depression and anxiety, suicidal feelings or tendencies, this, this is probably for you, okay? So at this point, the emotions that you have experienced that have been traumatic have gone through a process of somatization, which means the, the, the high frequency emotional energy has condensed into like a, a rock, like a crystal, like physically inside your body, you know? And at this point, you don't have conscious access to the emotion or the associated trauma. It's only felt as a, as a physical symptom, you know? Gastritis, arthritis, some kind of physical body pain. And this can elude you for years because you don't, because of this disassociation that's occurred, you don't connect any emotional problem to the physical problem. And this is why it's not really very, very common just yet. It's definitely getting more common, you know? Some, some good reads for this. There's The Body Keeps the Score, really interesting book. You can look into any of Peter Levine's work. So he does um, something called somatic experiencing. There's a lot more body oriented therapies, so somatic type practices. That's where this is really gonna help you. So at this level, with emotional root cause, you probably don't have access to it as a, on an emotional level. And you might think like, well, this is a physical problem. You know, I have physical symptoms, so I have a physical problem. But if this process of somatization has occurred, you need to look here. You need to look into this. Otherwise you can do all of this other stuff, all of this other physical stuff, and it will only get you so far, you know? I got to a certain point where I was managing and controlling a lot of my health problems, but I wasn't healing any further, you know? I had a big plateau. And it's because I needed to go a layer deeper and look into this emotional root cause and somatization concept. So I've built my own modality around this called SRT, Somatic Release Technique, where what we're doing in essence is we're releasing the emotions that have been somatized in the body. So it, it's, it's very similar to things like somatic experiencing. It really follows that that idea of we're in an open trauma loop, we need to complete the trauma loop, we do that just through feeling the bodily experiences because that's the level that the trauma is currently being expressed at. That's, that's the depth of access that we have to said emotion at the time. And that's where you have to work because that's where we have access to. 
Okay, so finishing up, we have one question. I'm going to answer this question. Andre says, I know you wouldn't expect, expect this, but even degenerative, desk, degenerative disc, discs cannot be fixed by chiropractors or osteopaths when you're in a state of chronic systemic inflammation. Intervertebral discs degenerate primarily because of the lack of hydration and collagen that is due to gut issues and not necessarily because of the mechanical stress as it is thought to be by the conventional doctors. This just adds to my point of, you really have to look at the root cause, you know? And as, he, as Andre is saying, it, even if it seems like a mechanical problem, it might not be. And this is why it's really important that you do the investigation, that you do the work to figure out where the root cause of the problems actually is. Because if in this situation this is true, and this isn't actually being caused by a mechanical problem, you can go and see an osteopath, you can go and see a chiropractor as many times as you want, the issue is gonna persist because you're not working at the root. Like for me, I've, I've had a problem with my, with my neck and my shoulder for a very long time. And I've seen a chiropractors, osteopaths, physiotherapists every week for the last like five years. And it, it always goes bad again. And this is because I know the root cause isn't physical, it's emotional. It goes slightly deeper than that. So right now I can use these kind of alternative therapies to give me symptom relief, but it's not fixing the problem. But to fix the problem, I'm working the emotional side of things. So you really have to make sure that you're doing what you can to make your life livable in the moment, but that you're also really working on resolving that emotional root cause that's underneath all of these, all of these symptoms as they're expressing. So that's everything for me today. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Let me know if any of this like resonated with you. Let me know if you feel stuck on any of these points or if this was like mind blowing or revolutionary for you in, in any way. Because these are, these are lessons that I've picked up over the last like five, six, seven years of my, of my healing journey. If someone could have given me all of this at the beginning, it would have jumped me forward a lot. So I really hope this helps jump you forward in your understanding of the situation that you're in and gives you a little bit more of an idea of what steps you can actually take to not live your life forever with a chronic illness. Because you don't need to do that. I've done it myself. I've seen hundreds of other people do it. As I said in point one and two, don't accept this as normal. Like this is not normal. You're not supposed to have chronic idiopathic problems that don't have solutions. You're not supposed to have pain that never goes away. You're just not, that's not normal. So make sure you keep investigating, make sure you keep working with people that are solutions orientated and won't settle for less than what's actually possible. So that's everything for me today. Hope you've enjoyed the video and I'll see you soon. Ciao.